You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast, your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm Pete Newsom with Ricky Baez again today. Ricky, how are you? I'm doing good. Pete, how about yourself? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Awesome. It's Friday. It's beautiful outside. That's right. Back from Europe. How was your trip? It was amazing. I, I National Lampoons, watch out. There'll be some more videos coming out later. We're, we're going to have you running over a cyclist in, in London. We're going to have you randomly show it up at someone's house in Germany and which may or may not have happened. <laughs> do we get, to, do we have some clips coming? Oh, my, let's see. Let's see. Let's see what this BL says. Well, welcome home. Sounds Thank like you. you had a great time. Enjoyed seeing the pictures that you posted and uh, I'm envious. I I've been here. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, all I'm saying is I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back in the U S well, good back to be recording and talking about what's right. important in the world of recruiting. And today we're going to address something that um, maybe isn't the most sexy topic, but it certainly is important to anyone who who hires regularly, and that is using data and mm. uh, and the analytics that come from that to improve, assess your, your recruiting process. Um, probably doesn't happen enough, right? I think I don't think I don't think companies generally take it, uh, the data aspect of their recruiting as seriously as they do in other parts of the business, like managing you know, profit and loss, for example. Um, but you, you may have a different perspective on that. Well, well, I, I think people will be surprised at how organizations don't use data to guide their, their <laughs> hiring. And you have to, right? For you to plan a marketing campaign, it's no different than you planning on vacation uh, for your family. You got to get a budget. You got to get a purpose. You got to figure out what, you know, how much things cost because then you have to stay within that budget, right? Because if you don't stay within that budget, you know, your PNL, your profit and loss is going to suffer from a leadership perspective. And you can't, the whole reason of you hiring somebody to begin with is so the organization can conduct business and how the organization conducts business is to get a profit out of something. And if you're spending way too much on one part of that, you're not going to make a profit and you're just making a big mistake. So yes, data is very crucial in the hiring process to make to make sure you're doing the right thing for the organization. I agree. Now, I, I have a, a biased perspective on this, perhaps. So okay. I want to hear what you have to say from, from the other side of the table, which is the internal HR perspective. So I'm coming at this always from a third party standpoint. And when I work with a company uh, on contingency, meaning we don't uh, generate any income or revenue uh, as a third party recruiter until uh, the candidate is hired and starts, I always want to understand how they approach hiring and time to hire in, in particular. So I don't think... Um, companies necessarily do a good enough job, and this is a general statement, some do, mm -hmm. but understanding how the downside to a position remaining open. <laughs> and, and so everything you just mentioned, you know, when you, when you <clears throat> consider your budget and how how to increase efficiency in your recruiting, you know, those things become much more important when you realize that there's a real cost and a downside to a position staying open, but I'll say most organizations out there don't put, don't see, put, don't place the right value on on that open position. Meaning they don't realize the harm that it's done. They don't realize it's costing uh -huh. them money. Now that, again, I'm I don't want to appear biased with that because of course I'm 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 motivated for that position mm -hmm. quickly. That's how I make make a living. What do you think about that? Well, from it's. What I think about it, it's it's I think I can best describe it by giving you an example of how I how I used to run my recruitment team back when I was working at Sears Home Improvements. And but in in order for me to get support from the top, now this is just the recruiting manager trying to get support, more finances, more money for for the recruitment effort, is for me to calculate the impact of the absence of somebody in that position. If I I had to calculate how much money is lost for every empty seat per hour, and that was $1,000 for every empty seat per hour, we had to fill 316 positions a year, right? And man, let me tell you, when you pull that number, you pull that data, it, br it really brings things into perspective because that gives you a certain motivation from a recruiter that otherwise wouldn't be there. 
you're costing the organization money for every day this this position goes unfilled. So what are you doing to stop that bleeding? So we're I mean, talking, that's what it was. We're talking thousands of hours, um, <laughs> thousands of dollars a day, yeah. right? For an empty yeah. position. Now, did the company buy into that? Because if you follow that logic out, Mm -hmm. And you'd say, well, if if this is going to cost the the cost of an open seat is north of a hundred thousand dollars a month, then anything we spend less than that is is a win. But I don't think most companies are reaching into their pockets <laughs> to, to spend a hundred thousand dollars on an open call center position, right? So no, my budget was not. so far less than that, <laughs> so far less. And no, it's it, it's but it 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 paints you a good picture and it paints where you are in that puzzle and what you need to do in that puzzle, right? So that's so so our budgeting was about 10 to 15 percent of what that monthly income would be for that person. And if I couldn't bring that that person in at 10 to 15 percent, then something was wrong with my process. Either something was wrong with my process or a new a new competitor came into town who's stealing all of our people. We have to look at all those variables. The worst thing you can do as a business owner is to jump into into a recruiting venture with with blindfolds on and not have an expert who's been doing this for a while, not have somebody who knows the numbers inside and out who can come in, take a look at what your plan is, make some tweaks in that plan and kind of help you bring that person across that finish line. So it, it's you have to pull those numbers out so you can see how much help you need. Well, let's get specific and, and talk yep. about the numbers that, that matter in, in this. And and so back to the the first one, I think the most important one is, do you know your time to hire? Do you do you have a target? Do you have history? And in 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 what you just said, if you're starting from scratch, you're starting from scratch, right? You should get guidance from someone like you, who's an HR consultant, someone like. Um, uh, four corner resources right. as a third party you know, staffing company. Now you have to select wisely if, if you're if you're looking for that help. So go with someone who's experienced, incredible, right. and 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 it, that's its own conversation, perhaps. But once you establish that this is important to you and you buy into that, and then you have to start measuring what is a good time to hire. Can you put a general um, amount or or date uh, of time on that or is it going to vary significantly by position? It's good. It's both. It's going to vary significantly by position, but you have to do your own research on it, right? Or you could buy that 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 research out there. But if you're looking for customer service people, right? It, it's it's even if you're starting out as a brand new organization right now, you need to track how long it takes for you to hire somebody. And let's say you've tracked it for two years. You take a look at the past twelve months and see how long on average it takes to fill that position, that's that's your marker right there. For customer service, it could be 30 days, right? It could be 15, 30 days. It really depends on, on how the market is. But let's say you're, you're, you're partnering with an engineering firm. Let's say you're partnering with a doctor's office and you're trying to find somebody who specializes in the lower intestines. <laughs> I don't know. It's a really, really neat specific skill set Obviously, that's going to take a lot longer because it, it's those types of resumes don't just fall out of the sky, right? You really have to um, go out and find a recruiting firm, a third party firm that specializes in that. That way you go into the world, find out what's best for you, and then you get out quickly. Um, I have seen that when you go out to a third party to fill out those specialized positions, they turn out to bring in better candidates because they know where to look and they know where to find that that type of person uh, so well, it depends on the position the third party recruiter in theory has a lot more dedicated time yes. to focus on 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 recruiting but it's fair to say that the larger the candidate pool the faster you can fill a role absolutely now it absolutely. doesn't mean to say i'll just you know, since you brought up the third party recruiter mm -hmm. aspect if you have a if you have to fill those customer service positions at scale and you have to do it quickly that you still may need to leverage a third party recruiter. So you have to yeah. understand what the situation is and then buy into how fast you need to fill the role. So if you say um, as a company, and I'm constantly surprised, even though I've been doing this a long time, when I hear timeframes of lead time that recruiters have, internal recruiters, corporate recruiters to fill certain positions where those are measured in weeks and months at times, right? 60 days to fill a staff level role. 
that a third party recruiter would measure in hours and days to fill. Mm. And so wow. I, I think there's a lot of um, improvement to be made from in my experience of where I see uh, that time to hire mm -hmm. being too loose, too generous. So let's, again, start from the premise that an open position costs company money. Yep. Um, it may damage customer service. It may cause employee burnout for those who are having to pick up the slack. Yep. So a lot of bad comes with an open position. And as that third-party recruiter over the years, and we'll get past it after this uh, and and continue with the, the this where we should be in this episode. But I'll tell you, I, you know, if I have a client and they can't tell me what happens if they, that position goes unfilled, I'm skeptical of working yeah. with them because okay. if anyone who thinks an open position is no big deal, well, they've either have a position open. They probably don't need, or they're not approaching it in the right way. So time to hire, measure it, and then look to improve it. Don't be content with a long time to hire. And if you're not sure whether your time to hire is too long, get help. You yeah. seek help. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> seek help. Absolutely. And, and, and look, and, and I know you and I have talked about this in the past. I mean, you also get unintended information with this kind of data, because if if a position goes open uh, for a long time and there's no impact on the business, then what a good partner should do is, look, do you even need, need this position? Right. right. Obviously, you're not feeling any pain. If you're not feeling any pain, to me, that tells me you're just burning payroll. So right. let's and, 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 you know, maybe that's a leaf that the company has yet to turn that you're helping them in that process. So that's adding more value to that partnership. There you go. OK, so so I, I like that a lot. And then the next one, of course, we, we have to think about is cost for hire. Yeah. How much is it going to take for you to fill the position and then where can you improve it? So it's not about just identifying it. You have to identify it first. So that's where the data comes in. You have to know what you're, what you're spending on job boards, what you're spending on internal resources in ter you know, for, for talent acquisition uh, and recruiting, what you're spending for social media, what yeah. you're spending on third party recruiters. So there's all of these aspects that go into it and then you, you, you have to identify it establish what that baseline number is, and then look for opportunities to improve it. And especially with the way things work today, I mean, again, back with with, with my old company, um, we used to use Indeed a lot, a lot. And if I remember, I'm just pulling this number out of the air. I think my cost per hire was about $15 per, per position, right? And Indeed, once it's calculated all the way to the end, not per applicant, or higher. And then later on, we started to experiment with different things because the well went dry. So we decided to do radio ads. Pete, who does radio ads these days? <laughs> I know we did. And I think I spent, I must have spent like $4,000 on, on a radio ad for, for one month. And I got two hires out of that. Two hires. So I quickly went from $15. Okay, per Ricky, hire. hold on. I, got, I have to stop you. Fifteen dollars for an indie. You, you you weren't spending fifteen dollars on Indeed. Someone so someone's giving you bad data. Bad data on that. No, back then. Huh? Yeah. Two thousand sixteen. Oh, I don't know. A job posting, uh, a single job posting, was hundreds of dollars back. back then. No, but wait a minute. So so it depends on the organization, right? Because on the organization, we had two hundred and fifty thousand dollar license that I got a you know a little bit out of that. But I'm talking. I don't even about think Indeed existed in two thousand sixteen. Just just yes. for the, just for the yeah they were they were uh, maybe maybe the new kid on the block back then. Okay? <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe they were giving their job postings away. Probably, back, but but back in that, 2016, that was when Career Builder was, uh, <laughs> I think, was the strongest. Well, that's why I preface back then because there's a lot. Is is it, it's very different right now. Very okay. different. I just don't want anyone thinking they that, that fifteen dollars to fill a position <laughs> is is something that they could expect to. What uh, is it right now these days? I don't know. What is I it think it, it it depends on the organization, yeah. but okay. but just just if you but see I would argue you're not really measuring even if it even if you had a very inexpensive cost of a job board, mm -hmm. um, how how many resumes did you have to go through? How 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 much time did you have to um, use in internal staff? Oh no no that's a whole different yeah, yeah no I get that because then I have to measure man hours and how much this takes and everything, <laughs> whole different thing. No, I'm talking about from a from a advertising perspective, right? Because we spent four thousand dollars on this ad, we hired two people, and now what? Hiring two people cost me thousands. 
And I'm like, all right, we need to go back and do something else, do something different. But it, you have to know what that price is. And what what Pete was alluding to earlier, you have to count the man hours that are in there that you have to interview, the man hours to sift through these resumes. These are things that you have to account for. So you, it, it's if, if you don't have that number right now, Start today. Start tracking everything today. Start talking to your recruiters. Let them know to track everything on paper. Most importantly, let them know why you're doing it because they might be freaking out thinking, oh, man, if my job on the line, no, not really. We're just trying to see how you're spending your time so I can keep track of my hours. So, yeah, 2016, completely Completely old information. <laughs> uh, well, you know, look, I, I've thought, thought about it. I had a few seconds to think about it. I think Indeed was really coming into prominence a little bit earlier than that. So I think you're right about that. Um, time blurs for me as it goes on, but but still the $15. Uh, you're like, what am I doing over, wrong? You, you weren't getting anything for $15 on Indeed. That that I that I can tell you. Um, okay, so, so- Thanks inflation. So cost, so cost per hire- um, and then source for hire. Since we're talking about that, let's let's, let's address that uh, in, in terms of job boards like Indeed. Um, Indeed is the 800 pound gorilla today. Mm -hmm. It's been career builder in the past. It's been monster. Zip recruiter is, is prevalent. Um, of course, LinkedIn is a source that many companies spend time on, but that's that's not it, right? It's, it's not just job boards. It's your own internal website. Is that, mm -hmm. you know, that's free. So if you have a big enough brand, your own internal website can be a really powerful source. Um, social media, employee referrals, and then third-party recruiters are um, a very popular source. So that's a data point that you should also measure and say, okay, we filled you know, 10 uh, positions with, with this level or this title last year. Here are the different methods and sources that we used, which ones created the right level of efficiency, mm -hmm. quality, and then and then cost. So it's if you only measure one thing, you're not going to get the full picture. So you really do need to, in addition to measuring the time to hire and factoring that in, right? So that's also what the source. Did we fill the position using a third party recruiter in two days where it took us two months using you know, posting on LinkedIn, right? So even though that is the less expensive option, and now that you said $15, that uh, no one's gonna hear anything else. Um, <laughs> it, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let that one go. Oh, I get um, it. I get it. it the, so even though it may seem cheaper to post on LinkedIn, although it, that would still be thousands of dollars over two months. Um, but if you can fill the position in a week using a third party recruiter, even though you're paying more, that may end up being better for the organization as a whole and saving money and increasing efficiency, uh, in a significant w way. So you do have to measure all these things. Um, and then tie them together to really get the the full picture. And also not not just so I would venture I would push people to go above and beyond that as well. Not just focus on 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 how much it costs to bring somebody in, but the costs have to be built in to make sure people do their due diligence. The amount of time being spent on making sure that you've got the right person for the role, not just the right person to fill the role at that time the right person for the role who's going to stick around for a while. That takes time. So right. that takes time. So that has to be built in there as well. We can't just be looking to hiring as quickly as possible. We have to look at hiring as quickly, hiring the best person for the job as quickly as possible. That 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 little sentence needs to be in there yep. to make sure, because otherwise you're going to have a, a, a high 30-day turnover rate. Yeah, That's I mean, what can it, end up happening. Yeah, so if you want that holistic view, you, you start with you know, employees who last, versus employees who quickly turn over. Now there's a point and some some period of time, maybe it's six months, maybe it's maybe it's just even a few months of saying, okay, turnover is no longer tied to our hiring process. Retention is now in a different bucket. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree where- I agree. There, there's a point where the, the recruiting process can only impact that so much, but you can impact short-term turnover and yep. improving um, how you recruit. So that data point needs to be measured. The number of candidates it takes to interview in order to select one, because now if you're taking the time of your hiring team, it may involve executives. It may involve multiple hiring managers, multiple rounds of interviews, even at times. So now it's, okay, do we have a breakdown in our selection process? Are we interviewing too many of the wrong candidates? Are mm. We uh, screening too many bad applications 
for this job. Maybe your job, uh, the way you've posted your job, you isn't go. really leading to the right results. And that's, once again, maybe a third party recruiter is in the mix. Are they delivering? Uh, how close to a one to one ratio are they delivering from interviews or candidates they submit to those you choose to interview? Mm. And of those you interview, you choose to hire. So all of these these come in. So in addition to time to hire, cost per hire, um, source, we, we need to talk about the, uh, you need to make sure you're measuring the job acceptance rate as well as the, the short-term turnover. And I think that paints, paints it. <laughs> it would, it would. It, it's uh, So the, the job acceptance rate, can, 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 can we talk about that for a second? Because that sure. one baffles me, Pete. Okay. So job how long it takes for somebody to accept a job. To me, that's a telltale sign because to me, if you've, you as a recruiter or you as the, as the, as the hiring authority, you got the person to be pay attention enough to stay through the entire process. What's happening at the, at, at the job offer that's causing them to, to stop and think about it uh, aside from the number, right? Because the, the number they get is different than the experience they got. Right. They can get an amazing experience, but this if it's not the number they want, they're not going to accept the job. <laughs> right. True. So so from my perspective, I, I, I guess my question is what happens in an interview process when you get somebody to interview all the way through, but now they kind of slow down during the acceptance process? And why is that so important? OK, so there's I have to approach that a couple from a couple of different ways. But first, uh -huh. let's just say that you can have all the analysis and gather all the data and and try to improve it as best you can. But if your position is unattractive, you, you can't fix that. Right. So if the organization if you find that no one wants your job, you you can't fool the the market. So you may have to consider whether you are paying too low, whether your expectations are unrealistic, whether your organization or the job within the organization is so unattractive that no one wants it, um, or your hiring process is is too uh, complex or or lengthy. The, all of these things could go into why you're not getting a higher acceptance rate. So that's sure. that's one aspect of it. So make sure that if if that is happening, it, you're you're looking at really what the what the root of the problem is. Now, I will also say that. And, and by the way, I'll say this, time to hire is a huge factor in that. If you're dragging the, it out and the recruiting team internally is doing their job and then the hiring manager sits on the resume for a week or two, good luck, right? I There's agree. no recruiting yeah. um, organization that can fix that. Yep. So that's something that I think you have to look, you know, go up the chain with internally and and make sure. But again, that's where the data has to tell the story. So if if you're you are that internal recruiting team and you're getting heat for too many positions going unfilled and you have the data to show, yes, but if we're, you know, we've sent 10 candidates and it took a week to for the hiring manager to review and then another week to schedule and then another week to um, to have that interview process you know carried out yep. and another week to have the offers being made, we just added a month to it. That's right. That is not uncommon and it happens a lot. And it shouldn't, should, there's no reason for it, right? I mean, there's reasons, but they're bad. So um, the excuse isn't going to justify the outcome. The last thing I'll say on that is if you if you are the third party recruiter, this is where you can really have, have an impact of understanding if I'm doing my job as a third party recruiter, I've qualified the candidate through all of these things up front. Right. I understand. Let's say there is a lengthy recruiting process. Now I have to decide whether that's something the market will bear mm -hmm. and, and whether this is a job that I should take on, because if I don't intend to work on any job, I won't work on a job unless I, I will fill it as a third party mm -hmm. recruiter. I can't say in business that way. I can't be effective. So I have to consider what is the, the interview process? Is it going to take a month? All right. Well, now if it's you know, a, a great brand, a great job, maybe that works. If it's a so-so brand and a so-so job, that probably isn't going to work, not, not in a competitive market. And then I have to consider uh, whether the candidate that I'm, I'm screening and, and qualifying, I want to screen them all the way through the job offer up front. So yeah. if I've done my job, by the time I submit the candidate to you as my client, um, I already know that 
they're a good fit. I already know that they're going to interview well. I already know that they're interested and intend to accept the offer, provided something out of the blue doesn't happen. So that's where the value of a third-party recruiter really comes in, um, where I've done all that up front before you ever see a resume from it, right? It, no, and it's true. And, and, and another another great reason why organizations should really pay attention to, to this kind of data is to help them realize, do am, as, as, as me as a business owner, am I willing to spend so much time and effort on this as a recruiter versus I could just save some money, let an expert handle this, and let me go with a third-party agency who can take care of that, right? It, it all depends. I mean, there, there's, again, there, you, you have to know your organization. You have to know yeah. your skills and, and available resources and strengths and, and where you're willing to spend time. I mean, someone has to spend it somewhere, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, it, it's just a matter of whether you want to do it or you want to pay someone else to do it. I always use the the oil change analogy. I could yes. change the oil in my car, right? I'm, I think I'm intelligent enough to do it. Um, but it's I'm gonna get greasy. I'm gonna get my hands dirty. I, I'm I'm not gonna do it efficiently. I'm probably gonna make a mess in the process. Or I could take it to someone who does this all day, every day. They're really good at it. They're they're efficient. They're they're gonna do it right. And they're going to identify problems if if there are any. Of course, I'm going to do that, right? I mean, of course. So I don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish when making these kind of decisions. That's a great analogy right there. I like I like the oil change because, look, I can change my own oil in my own car. It's going to be dirty. I'm going to feel crappy afterwards. Now I got to take the oil back to, to, to this place. So it's me saving money worth that kind of an aggravation, I guess. Well, from, and I would argue from that perspective, you see, there's where the data comes in, right? I would argue you're not yeah. saving money. So not, not to go too far with this, this analogy, but if you know your value, your, your, um, what is an hour of your time worth, right? Mm -hmm. to go to the store to get the, to order the oil, to look up how to do it. If you don't already know to go through the process of doing it and you add that up and then you compare that to the cost of going to, um, you know, a, 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 I don't know if it's called retail, but a, you know, a Jiffy Lube, a, yeah, a place that okay. changes your oil. I bet most people would be surprised to realize they're not actually saving money doing it themselves. <laughs> yeah, they're not. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so. so that works. That So same thing here then, right? So if you're a business owner and you're like, you know what? I just want to get the right candidate here and right now. And then I got my own people here that I can, I, I can justify their payroll doing something for the business right now. Why not go that route? But if you do, and here's the answer to that. And I, I, I think this is the most important point we can make today. If you don't know the data behind it and you're just making a gut decision on this and you think without knowing the numbers, I assume that $20,000 fee that the third party recruiter is charging is, is going to cost me more money, but you may be very wrong. You may find out and, and it, the, the $20,000 you'd spend as a savings over what you're losing in revenue over what you're going to pay in internal resources and paying for your own job boards and, and all the inefficiencies that come with how you do it versus how that third party would do it. So don't just look at the number on the surface, measure the data that goes into the number, and then you'll be equipped to make a, a smart financial decision. There you go. There but you most go. will do it, right? But but there's a way to do it. So how, how would you do it? Well, it starts with your applicant tracking system. So we have, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about that. Yeah. The ATS is the 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 method the software tool that you use to collect the data on your candidates and today's uh, applicant tracking systems are equipped to measure everything we've talked about today yeah um, and then some i mean they're they're probably overkill in, in many respects we'll, we'll talk about ats is on a different on a different episode um which well, which one which ones have you used by the way you i've any? used brass ring um i've brass ring is the one that i've used the most uh brass ring um, I think there was another one called TAS years ago, but uh, but Brass Ring is the one that has all those bells and whistles that you say that sometimes you're like, oh, why? One of them I discovered that was great. I wasn't using it for a while, Pete, and and people listening might might love this. So there was um, a measuring tool in Brass Ring that kind of it told me how long people took to apply. I love that. I ignored that for years. 
And I love that because I was able to pull information and get data on how long, where in the process the people stop applying, came back later, and on average, how long they spend on it. Long story short, I was able to figure out people would spend no more than 15 minutes on a job application. No more. On, on the data that I pulled. Now, this was 2018. I mean, I don't know what it would, what it is now since uh, uh, $15 per hire was really $15 bad. $15 <laughs> per hire. All I'm no, going to think about the rest of the that, day. That is good information to grab because if you have people that start your application and don't finish, you're missing out on great talent because these are people who, who have the skills that you're looking for. They looked at your job, but they, they, they don't want to waste any more of their time. You know who's actually going to see that through? People who are not hireable anywhere else, mm -hmm. right? They're, it, p p because they know they don't have any other options, so, so they're going to go through with it. So that gave me a lot of good information for us to redo our application process to bring it down from 45 minutes to five. And that changed that whole pro. Yes. It was amazing, amazing. So, folks, I'm telling you, your applicant tracking system, if you're able to see time to apply in there, use that data. It will give you a lot of information that otherwise would not be um, in front of you. It the works. Best, it, the best candidates have the lowest tolerance for those things. Oof. Right. There it is. The best candidates has the lowest tolerance for those things. They that do. is 100% true. And then uh, you wonder why the people who apply, they don't, they don't turn out to be good employees because they're the only ones who apply. You you have built an invisible barrier where great people go somewhere else. Great people repellent. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. It's like it's like, ra like raid for uh, it's like raid for good candidates. Right? Or what's that old Batman episode where they were like it's it's Batman had the shark repellent. Shark repellent. <laughs> shark repellent. <laughs> That's right. I'm Candidate sorry. repellent. We're way off. <laughs> Great candidate repellent. There you there's, two, there's two. There's two things you can count on with every podcast we do, Ricky. They're coming up: food and superheroes. <laughs> have to be, have to be brought up. You got that right. <laughs> but before, before, so I think we, I think we've covered this for the most part, right? So mm -hmm. just to recap, um, what you need to do, you know, the best thing you can do is start with uh, uh, an applicant tracking system where you can have a dashboard. You identify what you need to measure. You commit to actually measuring it, yep. find opportunities to improve and, you know, compare. That's how you do it, right? Here's here's what we're doing now. And if, if you haven't done this already, then start, right? Of course, the best time to do it is yesterday uh, mm -hmm. or five years ago, rather. What's the, what's the line? The best time is 10 years ago, whatever yep. it is. <laughs> the next best time is today. So that's right. Research your applicant tracking systems, uh, figure out, talk to your peers. If you're in, if you're in third party recruiting, uh, of course, lots of lots of resources and advice there. Maybe we'll bring out on some uh, some ATS vendors to the podcast. Wow. Let them let them pitch their own products. But um, start with that. Create your dashboard, and once you start measuring your 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 um, your numbers, compare them to the past. Look for opportunities to improve to improve and share with relevant people. I mean, you can't just give this to the recruiting team and say, "Look how you're doing." You have to use this to tell a story internally to get buy-in for spending money, to get buy-in for making changes. Uh, and the leadership at the top, you may have trouble in between, right? Mid-management mid struggles with these things because they're busy, they're consumed with other things. The, the, it, it may not have the same impact, but if you get this data to the top and you find out you know, the, the chief executive or a CFO, whoever it is, uh, finds out that, these positions are staying open just because you're you're not willing to spend money to fill them. Okay, I mean, it, I'll go back to what I always say: if if you're content with the position remaining open, it never should have been open in the first place. That's right. You don't really need to fill that job. So right. one or the other, you need to be either be efficient and motivated to do it quickly, or yeah, you know, reconsider whether the job was even needed. That's right. And and if you continue to do this, because I've seen that so many times, Pete. And you know how much money you're wasting just continuing to recruit for a position that's not even needed, right? No, it, it's that's all of the show. Sorry. So we won't do that today. <laughs> we won't do that today. We'll wrap up. Thank you for listening, Ricky. This weekend, you know what I'm doing. It's Transformers weekend, so trans new Transformers that's not, is opening. That's this weekend. It opens, so I'll be there tomorrow night because the NBA is tonight, so can't go on my normal Friday. Gotcha. gotcha. But uh, that's it. That's what I'm doing.
Uh, I'm waiting for the for the Flash the following weekend. That's what looks good for. too. I'll be there as well. So <laughs> you know me. I have to go to Friends my event. So uh, and you know me with, with with my stakes. So Pete is going to be back with an amazing review from Transformers, and I'm going to let you know what kind of rabbi I had. That's it. That's <laughs> I'm so it. predictable. Superheroes and movies. <laughs> All right, Ricky. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. Have a good one.